Um, I like to call the, what I talk about to E or not to E, because I am a traditionally published author with seven novels out and over 15 short stories. I am also what is called an indie author with five novels out and over 15 short stories. Um, I've written about ebooks on blogs, and I tell everybody, every author I meet, um, that they should put their backlist up on Kindle and all the others and try to keep the e-rights to their future works, which of course is becoming impossible to do. I participate on the Kindle boards, on the Amazon community boards, on the Nook boards. I'm very much online with Facebook and Twitter. Um, I am incensed that publishers, that traditional publishers, are only giving authors a 25% royalty on their books. I don't agree that just because a publisher releases an author's book in print that they are automatically entitled to the e-rights. Um, I think the prices publishers are charging for e-books are outrageous. None of the books that I have up are more than $3.99 or $4.99. Um, I agree with people who say that um, the major publishers are still kind of clueless about the future and they're not adapting very elegantly. They're still doing it. Fairly, with fairly clumsy steps. This is the transition. It's messy, it's ugly, it's not always fair, but we're going through it. Traditional publishing does a few things really, really well. If a publisher gets behind a title, you can't beat their marketing support and their promotion. They can saturate the media with information, and hype in a way that most individual authors, even though we're up on, you know, even though we're participating in Twitter and Facebook and in different groups, we just don't have that same clout. And even if you're not one of the chosen few with a traditional publisher, traditional publishers send out ARCs, advanced reading copies, to reviewers. Doesn't mean you can't do it, and in fact, I would recommend that you do, but they still do it for you, and they get the word out. And if it's a good book, you'll start a buzz going four or five months before publication date, and traditional publishers do that really well. Another thing big publishers are really, really good at is distribution. Their distribution networks are broad, deep, and in some cases, pretty creative. As much as we focus on online for our book information, when you see a book in a bookstore, or at the airport, or in Costco, or in the other store that I won't name, or even the grocery store, it makes an impression. In fact, the more impressions, the more a consumer is apt to buy. Publishers make those impressions possible in ways that a computer screen just can't do. Editing. Publishers have built-in editing, and you don't have to pay for it. Editing is a great thing. I want to get edited because I really firmly believe that an editor is trying to make my book better. And I know that they do. They point out things that I couldn't possibly have known when I was writing it, and so I'm happy when I get edited, and big publishers or even independent publishers can do that. Um, bookstores. I love bookstores and I love bookstore owners, and it, and it almost makes me cry when I hear that a bookstore is closing, and a lot of bookstores are closing. Um, a bookstore used to be the best way to get the word out about your book. If a, books, if a bookseller hand sold your book, you were golden. And finally, the thing that I really believe makes uh, traditional publishing worthwhile are reviews. Um, that third party credibility that you get when a reviewer from the New York Times, or the Chicago Tribune, or the Dallas Morning Herald, or whoever, says good things about your book or even says anything about your book. They do say that bad reviews equal 80% of the prowess of, of a good review. And you know I've gotten my share, so I'm, I'm sticking to that. Um, but anyway, I, I do believe that reviews are really important. And yes, reviewers are beginning to review e-books. Uh, e and some of the reviewers are pretty good. But, but there's, there's some issues there, which, which I'll get into. What are some of the cons about traditional publishing? Well, namely ebook rights and pricing. 
most traditional publishers will keep the ebooks and they will only give you 25%. And they say it as if they are giving you a big present, but it's 20%, 25% of the net, not the gross. And when you do all the calculations, you're really only getting 16 or 17% of that ebook. You know, if the ebook is at $9.99, that's not a that's not a bad deal, except that most people aren't buying ebooks at $9.99, they're buying ebooks at $4.99 and $3.99. Delay in reporting. In traditional publishers, you get statement, royalty statements twice a year, and you pray that they're right. If you're on Amazon or Pubit or Smash, well, Smashwords only gives quarterly statements, but Amazon and Barnes and Noble are immediate. You can see every day how many you've sold and um, how much you've made. Um, the biggest con, I think, with traditional publishing is that we all know what, what it, Sarah Paretsky said, that the shelf life of an average novel now is somewhere between the milk and the yogurt, <laughs> the cell dates. And you know, um, we've got about six weeks you know, if you're traditionally published, to get out there and to get that buzz going and to get those sales going. And, you know, then there's another book coming out and another book after that. Ebooks are forever. You don't have to worry about making a big, you know, uh, rush all at once because it can t it, you have time. You have forever. Um, I'm still kind of in that, oh my God, I gotta, get, I gotta make a big splash right away because I'm still in that traditional published mode and I have to constantly remind myself, it's okay, you can relax, it's gonna be there forever, you don't have to worry about it. And so I'm not quite there either, but it's a, it's a new attitude, it's kind of a new way of behaving. All right, let's talk about ebook publishing. What is the biggest advantage I think that ebook e publishing has? It's control. Control is in the author's hand as opposed to the publisher's hand. For the first time in publishing, you do not need a middleman to get your book to market. You do not need an agent, although I would very much recommend that you have an intellectual property lawyer. You do not need a publisher. All you need is a good book, and you then need to get a cover made, um, I do not recommend doing it yourself. I recommend going to someone that has, who's a graphic designer and has um, experience in doing book covers, and there are more and more of them coming up, and you get the cover that you want. You and the graphic designer decide. You should be prepared to pay for that, okay? You're gonna pay a couple hundred dollars, and you need to you know, catch somebody's attention by the way that the cover looks. So there's a difference in the way you design an ebook cover and a traditional cover. Um, you're going to want to get it edit, edited. While traditional publishing has in-house editing, you're going to need to get your manuscript edited professionally by a copy editor, or maybe if it's your first book, you might even want to invest in a developmental editor. E-publishing has great potential for your backlist if you are traditionally published and you can get the rights back. They have new life. On, on Kindle or on Barnes & Noble. It's a wonderful technique. It's a wonderful way to effortless, pretty much effortlessly, I can get that out, uh, make more money. Amazon, if you price your book at $2.99, you have the potential of making 70% of that back, which is not bad. As a traditionally published hardcover uh, writer, author, $2 was probably more than I was gonna get from a hardcover and, to begin with. So I'm not, I'm not arguing with the $2, that's pretty good. Um, but I, I'm beginning to wonder if the future is, um, and David alluded to this too, the future may not be Amazon. The future may be as uh, entrepreneurial as selling your own books off your website. What are some of the cons of ebook publishing? Because there are some. I already alluded to one, Amazon. Um, Amazon is the 800 pound elephant in the room. And some days they're my best friend and some days they're my worst enemy. And it's hard to tell which is which depending on the day. Um, let's do a reality check on the money. You've heard that people are making fortunes on Amazon and there are, but far more 
people are making nothing or making very little money on Amazon. So much of it, like traditional publishing, depends on luck, depends on the subject matter, depends on the length, and finally, the quality. And this is a big, big issue with ebooks. The quality is all over the place. There are no gatekeepers yet. There are emerging gatekeepers. There are people who are, uh, there are websites that are claiming to review books honestly and as against traditionally published models. And perhaps that will happen, but it's not there yet. And so when people are buying ebooks and they buy an ebook from someone who has not published before and doesn't know the first thing about craft of writing, um, it, I wince because it's bad for all of us. Pricing. Pricing is both an advantage and a disadvantage. Right now, there is a race to the bottom of the market. Um, a lot of indie authors price their books at 99 cents, which absolutely makes me crazy, except that I have two books at 99 cents. Um, the rest of my books are at 2.99 and 3.99, which I still think is too low, and I would like to uh, would like to pull them up to 4.99, but my sales will drop because there are, even though the whole, most of the world still doesn't have Kindles. The people that do have Kindles are rushing around trying to fill them with content. And they're looking for the most, the cheapest deals. And so they are buying tons and tons of 99 cent work. But I have heard over and over, and it happened to me, there was a few months where I was selling like wildfire. At 99, I had two books at 99 cents, and I was selling like three and 4,000 books a month. And I'm like, wow, this is really cool. And then I said, OK, I'm smart. I'm going to play with my prices. I'm going to go up to $2.99. Because instead of making 35 cents, I'll make $2. And guess what happened? Sales tanked. I'm still trying to climb back. So you just, it's really, the pricing, it's a game. I mean, it's a shell game. And who knows where it's going to lead right now. It's very tough. And finally, there is the new type of marketing. Um, without getting into too much detail, what I have found over the past six months is that the most effective way to market yourself is to join groups, is to be in groups. I am a member of three different groups. Some of them are a little more branded than others. Um, but I think when you're with a, with a group of other like-minded authors, you kind of promote each other on Twitter and Facebook, and you review each other every once in a while, and you say nice things about the other person's books or the other person if you don't like their books. And I think all of that does have kind of a, what's the word I'm looking for, snowball effect, where um, it increases your leverage and your marketing power. And lots of people are trying different things and new things, and they should, because this is a new industry and it, and it still has to shake down. Talk about metadata and searching and tags. And there are a lot of companies that seem to say, oh, I know how to get you at the top of the search lists. I know how to do this, that. You know, there are people that can optimize your website and your presence and get you number one or two on Google when people search for certain keywords. That's different than marketing a book. Well, it's sort of the same, but it's not. I mean, I'm t when I'm talking about marketing a book, I'm, I'm actually talking about making sure people click on the Amazon link. I don't care if they go to my website. I want them to go to the Amazon link and read, and read the description and, and read the um, customer reviews, hopefully they're good, um, and then buy that book. And, and I really don't care if they go to my website until I start selling directly from my website. And then, of course, I will care if they go to my website. Uh, what have you found you've had to do in terms of uh, publicity for yourself and, and, and the, the electronic version of the traditional press kit? I, I would imagine that every author's website should be their press kit. Um, and I also, you know, I have a page for each book. 
And if I have an author's note, you know, why I wrote the book. And in some of, in some of my books, I did some Q&A, why I wrote the book, where the idea came from. Um, in other books, there may just be a paragraph as to why I wrote it. But my website is my press kit. As far as external promotion, I never thought I would be an, you know, feel like a used car salesman, but I do sometimes. Um, particularly on Twitter, although I have to tell you that I think Twitter is a really great tool. So I could just be on Twitter all day, and I would meet and have a lot of fun, and, but it, that's, by the way, one of the other disadvantages of eBooks is that the amount of promotion that you have to do if you're really going to be out there is a tremendous time suck. You need to be prepared to promote at least an hour sometimes two hours a day to promotion. And that takes a lot of energy away from your productivity as a writer. My writing has slowed down considerably since I started promoting online. It just has. I mean, I'm online all the time. I come from a PR background. And the, rule, the, the number one rule that you learn from the word go is use third parties to build your own credibility or to build your client's credibility. So instead of saying, my book is great, my book is great, I'll say, compelling best read since Charles Dickens, and then the name of my book and the Amazon link. You know, or so-and-so says this is the best book since sliced bread. I tend to use a lot of third party you know, review, reviewlets, one word, two year, you know, and does it work? I've definitely seen uh, sales as a, as a result of Facebook and Twitter. Um, there's something that, that is in the indie universe is called Sample Sunday. And if you have an indie book out, you, you sign up at, at Kindle boards and you put your, you know, you, you put together a Twitter uh, tweet with, you know, your book and a couple words about it and um, everyone pledges to retweet each other, and on a good day, I can see 20 sales from a, from a sample Sunday. So I, it's definitely there. And I've seen, I've seen sales from Facebook groups as well, not as many, um, but they have been there. Uh, I'm with a group called Top Suspense, and once a month we have, we have these conversations online we call Inside Top Suspense. Uh, on our blog, and we have a topic, and we, we talk about different aspects of the same to topic, and we invite people to join the conversation and give us their take, and it's been very successful. And so that takes time. Um, composing tweets, uh, putting stuff on Facebook, writing blogs for people. People ask me to do interviews on their blogs, so you know I don't take canned things. I have to you know write. So writing blogs, uh, writing my own blog on the outfit. It's easy. It's easy to spend two hours. Are there agents that are going after a part of everything you do, even when you do it yourself? Comment, please. Okay, um, the whole issue of agents is changing rapidly. Um, and those of you who have agents might know that. The biggest issue right now is that some agents are telling their clients, come to us. We know you don't want to be involved in all this ebook stuff. We'll publish your ebooks, we'll put them up for you, and all we want is 15%. And uh, there are other people that are saying, this is a blatant conflict of interest. An agent cannot be a publisher. They're not making the kind of money they were making five years ago, and so they're looking for additional sources of revenue themselves. So some agencies have gone this route. To be more specific, no, my agent does not take anything that I have done on my own. And since um, I sold my last book and the book that's coming out in March, I sold both of them without an agent. Um, so she won't, be, she, she won't be sharing in any of that. In the handout that I gave you are a, about four or five blogs that I really, really think you need to read. And number one is Chris Wrights, K-R-I-S-W-R-I-T-E-S. Chris Wrights is K.K. Rausch or Catherine Rausch 
And every Thursday, she has a blog on the business, she calls it the Business Rush, R-U-S-C-H. And she has been talking about the changing nature of publishing for about a year now. And she makes some of the, she, she is so sensible, she is so common sense oriented. The first thing I do, part of the two hours that I spend online every day, is to read Chris, Chris Rausch and see what she's saying. And um, I really recommend that you read her too. So there, there's a lot of things that can be done that you can do that you couldn't do four or five years ago in, in being published traditionally. 